the melt up continues in this video we have so much to talk about starting off with what's going on here in the equity markets as the dow the nasdaq and the s p are all putting up stellar days up almost a percent and a half to a percent each of them we're going to look at what is possible here on the upside or whether or not we're looking at an intimate correction we're going to take a look at the dollar we're going to take a look at the DXY and make sure that we continue to stay on the right side of this trade, whether or not a potential reversal is coming or we are looking for further weakness. We're going to make sure that everyone has a good read on what's going on gold, what's going on silver, and what's going on with Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at all of that. This is an important episode and I look forward to sharing it with you right now. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Looking forward to this session. I'm gonna take my time with it, really enjoy it as we cover some important topics here. Let's start with the dollar. We're gonna start with the DXY actually. And what I wanna focus in on is what's happening over here. We have a channel developing, follow me over here. This is the read to the future and what we need to continue. Oh. This is where we need to focus and watch for what happens on the way up. Now, hey, Jordan, that's not so neat, right? So let's go lift that up a little bit. Here's the channel that we're in. You could see it over here. Now, why I want you to focus in is over here. Remember this channel? Do you remember how bullish I was on the dollar until we broke down and then I became bearish on the dollar, which has led to a significant move to the downside? Also, take a look at the structure of this. We pierced down below the channel over here, but we had one, two, three touches on the bottom, one, two, three touches on the top. The fourth one put in a lower high before we broke down outside the channel. You could see the same thing happening over here. Here you had a, 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 protrusion, a protrusion. Here you had a protrusion below the channel, but you have one, two, three touches, one, two, three touches to the upside. Let's see what happens here on this fourth, whether or not we're able to come down and test. All right, let me, let me pause and actually draw this in pretty clean. It's very important. This is where we're focused right now. Here we go. This is a good look. Is that a good look at the channel we're in? And we're gonna clone this right now. Let's push this up here. Here's the upside, all right? Here, this is what we're looking at right over here. All right, this should be down a little bit and that should be down a little bit. That's good enough for us to work with. Let me highlight this for you so that we could keep, a, this is so important right now. And the reason why it's so important because if we break to the upside over here at that point, Right at that point, we're looking for a further extension, a further extension and a, a move. We're looking for a further extension and strengthening of the dollar. We will be looking because it's still in a downtrend to sell off of resistance, but we'll be looking, but we will, but we will be looking for higher resistance levels to sell off of. Before, not until we break out of there will I start talking about the levels we're looking for. Right now, we're still trading within this channel. We are not only that, you see that right now we have some horizontal, some horizontal resistance right here where my mouse is, exactly where we're coming into. And that's also coinciding with this trend line right here. So right now, we've come to a place of resistance. The Asian and London session is going to be very important. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't come break up and test this channel right here, that trend line resistance right there. That's all possible. I don't want anyone getting or thinking the tide is turning until we have any technical breaks to show us that is happening. Really, what I see is coming back over to here is the possibility of this forming, this little bit of lower high forming which possibly is forming right here. If we then continue down, we could see a possible breakdown of this channel. This is not the cleanest looking channel. That's a lot, a lot better. 
That's a lot better. I'm going to leave that on there for tomorrow morning. That's what we're going to be focused in on. The reason I'm spending so much time here with the dollar, because it, it, it is right now at a position where we have to be very mindful that the trend could possibly be changing. Now, be, be just be very, very aware. We're not looking to try to ever get the top or the bottom, the turning point of a trend. That's very hard to do. It's very hard to do. What we're looking for is the sweet spot. After that trend changes, then we're looking to start trading with it. Okay? But we could we have these little guides right here, these little patterns right here that help show us when we have to be on alert that possibly we are seeing a possible trend change. Right now, we are seeing almost the same thing we saw over here. This was a downward sloping channel. Now, granted, it was a lot bigger, a lot wider, and a lot longer. This is a mini version of it, and it's sloping downwards a little bit more this time. Be aware. Downside targets, if we break out of this channel, what are we looking at, right? First, we're looking for a test of 90.84, and then really what we're looking at is what happens at 88.40. So we have moved a significant amount already this year on the dollar. There is the possibility for another big move coming. We're going to be tracking it. We're going to be following it. Before we get into the equity markets, let's check in with those who are trading and holding gold. You could see that we've lost 1956. We've lost the support over there, light support, and we're coming down. And so far, 1930 is holding and holding well so far. Okay. Look at all the supply over in here. Look at all the supply. This is where the buyers, if they're going to hold this up, are going to continue to hold. I'm looking. If we get a reversal out of here, personally, I'm looking to take a swing trade on this. I'm looking to be a buyer over here. I think this is extraordinarily bullish. This remains bullish above 1930. If we lose 1930, at that point, I'm going to be on the sidelines waiting for a deeper and perhaps steeper pullback. We'll be monitoring it every day. Right now, though, I do see that we continue to put in these lower highs and at the same time, higher lows. This is a consolidation pattern. It's not as pretty as it was, but it still is. And we're waiting for the breakout either to the upside or the downside. I'm leaning towards the upside, meaning that the bullish structure here is, is the structure of this continues to be very bullish, as well as we continue to be on this bull market here. Now, look at this all, all, also, just this trend line over here. You could see that, right? You could see that we're still holding that trend line over there. Yeah, that's you don't need to be pretty. Right? I'm just trying to get you to understand what's going on. And you could see that if we lose 1930, then we would be breaking that trend line. That could lead to a deeper and steeper correction. Nevertheless, right now it's bullish. Same thing here on silver. This is really bullish. Now, I'm not looking to go ahead and buy over here. I'm more focused on gold. But I want, what I want you to see, this is almost a little bit ahead of gold where we were making those lower highs and, and higher lows. And we broke out to the upside, right? When we broke out to the upside, we came back down, retested it, and then resumed off. And that was a swing trade entry. Now, I was targeting up here, right? And we did never reached my target. We never reached my target. We came back down. But notice that we are still holding above here. Look over here. Focus right here for a minute where the last entry was. And we're still above there. And that held today as local support. Resuming off here is quite bullish, right? Uh, what would need what would need to happen in order to turn um, perhaps into a more ne uh, negative or bearish bias here? See a little bit further selling. Look over here at that resistance. I'm coming in this whole area with support right over here. Extend that out, and as long as we're above that, silver remains very very bullish. Now we see a two and a half percent correction today on silver, right? Not so bad at all. Silver is not dumping. Silver is maintaining that bullish nature. When you have and the moves that silver, silver is the best outside of Bitcoin. Silver is the best performing asset since the since the crisis. When you have that type of volatility, the upside it is not just straight up. There are moves, right? There are moves to the upside and downside. Just I want you to take that overview approach here and see that the bullish structure is still very much intact here on silver. Now, 
What else is going on? There's a couple other things I wanted to focus in on with you. Bitcoin, we'll start there. We saw a large sell-off in Bitcoin. That was, uh, so, so in South Korea, Bitthumb used to be one of the largest exchanges. Uh, today, I don't know how much volume they do. The authorities over there raided their offices and you saw an immediate dump on Bitcoin. We came back in, now it's funny because the exchange has already been hacked 10 times in the past. It's not like, Coinbase went under or something, um, you know, of that magnitude. But you see, technically what happened was this trend line over here has held again. We've had three touches in the past week into it. It continues to hold as support. This is where this is where you should have that that mindset that you're waiting for those pullbacks to lean into support to buy and resuming off here is a good entry. I'm actually adding over here. If we lose this trend line over here, then 10,500 is a big area. It's a big area because if we do lose that, then we will have a bigger pullback on Bitcoin and it could happen quickly. It could happen quickly. We'll then be closing the CME gap right here at 9,600. And this is where we'll be focused on. This, this is the, the breakout of the bull market, this trend line that goes back all the way to the all-time high. There's that trend line over there. We'll come back to that as well as this prime trend line down over here. That's where probably you'll see a bunch of buying activity come in. Uh, that might be a spike down to there if that's what happens. So make sure you already have your orders in. I don't think that happens. I do not think that happens. I think we actually hold right over here. I think we hold over here. This is actually very, very bullish since the bull market began. We are consolidating. This is uh, a nice period of consolidation here. And I think that our next move is not only up, but I think we'll be breaking this trend line resistance to the upside, targeting 14,000. I think all that occurs this month in September. I'm aware of my downside risks. I'm aware what happens if we lose this trend line over here, right? And just to keep everyone in perspective, over here, a test to this trend line over here, that's only a 25%, that's only a 25% pullback from the from the recent high. That's something that we definitely expect at all times during this bull market here on Bitcoin, right? I suggest if you're looking to pick up the dips. If you're looking to buy the 30% pullbacks, that you have your orders in ahead of time as they will be quick and it's going to be hard to try to get orders in at market when the, when that type of price action is, is, is in play. Now, let's focus in on the equity markets. The S&P is actually breaking a huge level over here, a huge trend line over here. I'm going to look at my Twitter feed in a second to show you some perspective of it. But look over here, this is our trend line. We've been focused on this prime trend line over here for months, right? For months. And then we've cloned that to give us our resistance on the upside as well as then further levels to play off of. We've broken our outer trend line over here to the upside. Now this, this is a game changer if we hold over here. If we hold this, right? Now obviously we're, we're closing uh, in about seven minutes, and it looks like that today, we will have closed above it. Um, but if tomorrow, I mean, it is possible tomorrow we have a nasty red candle and take us back down into this structure, right? But what we're looking to happen now, and this is a game changer, this becomes a game changer. If we are able to come in and then confirm this broken trend line resistance as support and resume off that, that is a game changer. I'm going to show you why. Right now, actually, before we get into, uh, before we start looking at what's going on on the Nasdaq and on the on the uh, excuse me and on the Dow, let's take a look over there and see if we can get some further clarity. By the way, before I do that, today, right now, we're looking for the S and P forward price to earning uh, ratio right over here. We're looking at a new record high, taking out the high of the dot com bubble. That's significant. However, there are major differences right now. Someone pointed out that one of the major differences was back then you saw, uh, you know, you had many individuals participating, right? The main difference between then and now, right? And you always hear this time is different. This, well, what is different? 
Aside, let's not even get into the, the coming stimulus. Let's not get into the expansion of the Fed's balance sheet and the coming expansion over the next three to six months. Let's focus in on one thing that's a major difference between re- back then and right now, right? And that is, oh, by the way, before I even go further, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and, and, and give me a follow. I share some really interesting information that I find information, and I think you will as well. Look over here. This is comparing the NASDAQ today in blue back towards 1999, and you could see we talked about that that last move, and we talked we showed yesterday in the video how much room we do have to the upside and how I feel that we're just getting started. Look at this. This is a really good uh, indicator showing that last parabolic move. And it seems like we're going parabolic, but we're not yet. All right. What I do want to show you is this. Let me go ahead over to my uh, to pull it up for you because this is what I wanted to show you. And here it is. You're looking over here at the S&P 500. This resistance line has every time been where we have pulled back. Going back, this this graph is showing up to 2012. That's far enough for us to look at. And you could see over here that today, today we've broken above it. We've broken above it today. That's a game changer, a potential game changer. Let's see if in the next 24 hours we hold it and then confirm it into that broken resistance into support. That could be an absolute game changer. Let's keep abreast of that. Uh, what else did I want to show you? There was this over here. Uh, when I talked about what is different between then and now, and I talked about the central banks, I brought this up. This was about a week ago. And I talked about uh, as the Fed has been picking up the pace, the Fed now owns 22,913 different securities, according to Bloomberg. You can see it all the way down over to here. This is massive and incredible. Right, the Fed has stepped in during the second quarter. You saw a lot of sovereign wealth funds positioning out of stocks in in the second quarter, and the Fed was there to buy, buy, buy. And I said you're going to see those phones funds FOMOing back in, FOMOing back in. You have central banks now buying. Now this is going back. Um, okay, this is May 11th, of 2020. Just pointing out that we had the Swiss. Central banks stepping in and buying big tech names as well as Disney and GE. This is going back a year, a year ago. And but this line that I highlighted, it really is interesting. And I, this is what's happening: the central bank is literally printing money and using that capital to buy shares listed in U.S. companies. All right. So the Swiss central bank is kind of setting the stage what other central banks are going to need to be doing. Nevertheless. You have the Swiss Central Bank at this point was $94 billion of U.S. stock. They print money, buy U.S. stock. This is just from, from a month ago on August 5th when their Q2 SEC filing uh, was, was filed. And you saw that they were owning now $118 billion of U.S. stock, including their top five holdings of Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook. Here's the SEC filing. This is not this is not made up. This is real. Here's the Swiss National Bank's holdings. You have central banks buying outright stocks in the US equity market. You have the 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 Federal Reserve holding almost 23,000 different securities. This is absolutely madness. There is massive room yet to go to the upside. It doesn't mean that there won't be corrections. However, this trend line break today was a big deal. That's a big deal. What I'm looking now to happen, if this holds in the next 24 hours, I'm looking to see if this is retested and now confirmed into support. This is a potential game changer here going forward. Take a look at what happened on the Dow today. Massive move up on the Dow. I'm not showing on my data how far it is. It looks like 1.8% to me. A massive move, closing the gap, blowing through it, and now we're coming out and it, we're just a stone throws away from new all-time highs on the Dow Jones. Why that is significant? Why that is significant is because if you have all three indexes making new all-time highs, 
That is incredibly bullish. If you have the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500, all three making new all-time highs, that's something that we've been monitoring and looking out for. That is extraordinarily bullish. NASDAQ was, was the lagger today, but that's good because you're seeing a rotation. You're seeing a rotation, and that's really important for, for showing that this could really continue to keep going on for an extended period of time. I believe that's all I really wanted to share with you today. I'm focused over here on what's happening on the dollar. I don't know. I don't have any way of predicting the future. I, I really don't. But I am able to follow what's going on the charts. We're going to continue to follow what's going on with the macro. But at the same time, we're letting the charts unravel the story for us. And we're going to do our best to stay on the right side of the trade. It's not always that easy. Going, this was, first of all, this was easy. This was easy. This was also easy. And this was very hard. This area over here from late April into May was very difficult to stay. We did, I didn't know at that point, but if you go back to those live streams, I was very clear we could go trade up at this point on the S&P to 4,100 or we could come back down to 2,300. I just didn't know which way we were going to go. It took a little while. It took a little while until we said, all right, you know, now it's clear to us. Now it's clear and we're only on the buy side. What happens now? Well, I got neutral over here because I didn't feel that the risk to reward was there, especially late into summer. We have moved 8% since. That's massive. Now I was watching what happens over here against this trend line. It looks like potentially now we could be breaking above it and potentially then confirm it into support. The next 24 hours is gonna be big on the markets and we have a lot of events happening actually. We have, uh, we have tomorrow not ISM non-manufacturing PMI numbers, and we also have on Friday non-farm payrolls. We're going to follow it all. I'll see you all in the morning where we're going to be taking a look, to digesting what happened overnight during London and figure out what we need to do in order to position ourselves accordingly. So far, right here, this might be the resistance that we were looking at. And let's see whether or not we get that reversal. Let's see if we get a clone of what happened over here in this downward sloping channel, right? And then broke down occurring right over here. If we do, I do not think the move is going to be as big as it was last time, right? I think we're going to have uh, definitely a move down to 90.84 from then, come back up, and then maybe we could get a big move down towards 88.40. I'm watching the other side. I want to know where I'm wrong. If we break outside this channel to the upside, at that point, we're going to be focusing in on together what levels we're looking at above to what type of retracement we might see. And then we're going to be looking where we could go ahead and look for a rejection and look for the trend down to continue. I'm going to highlight that trend line over there. Those trend lines are so important. That was a big technical break. We had two huge technical breaks on the dollar this year. The first one occurred over here outside of this channel. And the second one was the break of this trend line over here. We're looking for both of these to hold as resistance on the way up. We need to clear above this trend line over here. We need to clear above it for us to change our mindset and to become, to become dollar bulls once again. And I don't care what side of the market I'm on as long as it's the right one. All right, everyone, I appreciate the time today. I will see you all in the morning, and I look forward to sharing more with you then.